Now, folks living in the Appalachian Mountains have long known that there are things that happen deep in these backwoods that just can't be explained by modern science. Indeed, there are countless folklores and legends that describe mysterious beings, disappearances, witches, curses, and supernatural forces. Many folks claim that there are entire towns and cities in these mountains that are cursed and have been for hundreds of years. That's right. Places that possess some unknown force that only the brave or the foolish dare trespass. Believe it or not, one such city is Knoxville, Tennessee. You know, the one with the strange landmark standing in the skyline that looks just like a microphone. And for the past 100 years, musicians have mysteriously died right after performing or visiting this city. Names like Elvis Presley, Hank Williams, Janis Joplin, George Jones, Randy Rose, and many others have mysteriously met their fate with destiny after visiting this city. Now, while some may brush this off as a coincidence, others swear that this city is cursed and any musician performing there is risking their very lives by doing so. So, being a musician myself, I thought I'd do some snooping around and find out exactly what's behind the musical curse of Knoxville. The curse can be traced back to February 17, 1943. That's when the Russian composer Sergei Rachmaninoff, the world's greatest concert pianist at the time, traveled all the way to Knoxville to put on a concert for a small select audience at the University of Tennessee. Now, he didn't know it, but this would be the last performance of his life. Everything appeared to go smoothly. However, once he got on a train to try to leave Knoxville, he instantly fell gravely ill, and on his deathbed, he told his family that he knew in his heart something had happened to him in Knoxville and ended his life. Now, after he died, none of his students would dare set foot in Knoxville. The city felt so bad about his death that they erected the only statue of Rachmaninoff that exists in the world, and it still stands today in downtown Knoxville. And of course, they placed the statue right underneath the microphone in downtown, like a trophy case on display. Did the musical curse of Knoxville kill Rachmaninoff? Do you need more proof? December 30th, 1952. Country music superstar Hank Williams was just 29 years old and in the prime of his life. He rolled into Knoxville and he checked into the Andrew Johnson Hotel at 7 o'clock p.m. Now you have to keep in mind that this hotel itself has an ominous history, all of its own, and folks mysteriously die after staying there, including Amelia Earnhardt. Hank suddenly fell ill right after he checked in. He ordered room service and began having mild convulsions, so a doctor was summoned. The doctor injected Hank with some morphine mixed with vitamin B12, yet there was no improvement. Hank's manager and assistants ignored his erratic breathing and the rattling they heard coming from the singer, and instead they carried him out to the back seat of his brand new 1952 Cadillac and they left Knoxville three hours later. Within the next hour, the Cadillac was pulled over by the Highway Patrol for reckless driving, where a lifeless Hank Williams was discovered in the back seat. However, his manager convinced the officer that Hank had just passed out from too much drinking. They drove on for nearly 24 hours until they stopped for breakfast. Hank's manager pulled the coat off of Hank, and his hands were ice cold, and when he tried to move them, they snapped back into place. They rushed him to the hospital in the small Appalachian town of Oak Hill, West Virginia. The doctor took one look at Hank and said, well, he's dead. 
The truth is, he never left Knoxville alive. Did the musical curse of Knoxville kill Hank? Do you still think it's a coincidence? You need more proof, you say. All right, have it your way. March 19, 1982, superstar rock and roll guitarist Randy Rhodes was at the height of his fame at 25 years old as the lead guitarist for legendary rocker Ozzy Osbourne. Rhodes blended his classical roots with an unprecedented metal flair. He was arguably the greatest rock and roll guitarist of all time. He and Ozzy performed what would be their last show together to a sold out crowd of over 6,000 roaring fans in Knoxville at the Civic Coliseum. The concert was an amazing show, and the band loaded their tour bus right after performing the last song of the night, Suicide Solution. However, mysteriously, the air conditioning on the bus stopped working the moment they tried to leave Knoxville, and the heat was too much to take inside of the bus, so they pulled over to get the AC fixed. While they were waiting, most of the band was asleep on the bus when Rhodes was talked into taking a joyride on a small 1955 airplane with a pilot who didn't have a license. Even though Randy was afraid of heights, he got on the plane. In the middle of the flight, the pilot decided to buzz the tour bus to wake up the band. The wing of the plane clipped the bus and sent the small plane spiraling out of control, and it crashed and exploded into a house. What made the tour bus stop once it left Knoxville? And what possessed Randy Rose to get on that plane? Was it the Knoxville music curse or just another coincidence? April 6, 2013, country music legend George Jones was performing a show at the Knoxville Civic Coliseum on his farewell tour. The show appeared to go smoothly and the singer sang his last song, He Stopped Loving Her Today, and walked off stage. He immediately turned to his wife Nancy and he gave an ominous prediction. Honey, I think I just did my last show and I gave them hell, the singer said. And he was right. He was soon rushed to the hospital where he remained for the next 20 days until he died. Still just a coincidence? Now, other musicians have appeared to escape the music curse of Knoxville only to meet their demise a short time later. Consider this. Janis Joplin performed in Knoxville on November 8, 1969, and she would be dead eight months later. The King himself, Elvis Presley, last performed in Knoxville on May 20, 1977. He sang his last song of the concert, How Great Thou Art. Yet, Presley would be dead in less than three months. Now, I don't know about you, but that's a pretty impressive list of musicians who met their demise in Knoxville. Rachmaninoff, Hank Williams, George Jones, rock legend Randy Rhodes, Janis Joplin, and Elvis Presley. Do you believe that it's a coincidence that so many legends had their careers ended in these mountains of East Tennessee? Or is there something more to this? Are the mountains of Knoxville cursed for all the musicians who dare set foot in this city? Hmm. Well, I know of at least one place that I won't be performing anytime soon. Mm -hmm. 